Hi everyone, so today I am actually shooting from my home. Um, I've never shot anything from here before, so it's quite nice. I feel much more like, I don't know, at ease here. Um, but today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about my vegan story. So if you're not into preaching and you're not into that kind of thing, I would recommend that you stop watching now. My last sort of vegan video that I just put up with James, a lot of people were saying they wanted to know a little bit more about why I became vegan, when I became vegan, you know, a bit more about the foods that I eat. I thought it'd be cool to kind of tell you the story from start to finish. Basically, not a lot of you know about me is that I grew up on a working farm in Surrey. My family moved out to the country so that we'd have like a better sort of, I guess, quality of life. We always loved like being outside, being around animals, and um, growing up on a farm was like the dream in so many ways, but it definitely opened my eyes to animal cruelty from a very young age. We had cows, sheep, chickens, ducks, obviously we had like dogs, we had horses, we had everything. Uh, we even had alpacas at one point, which is really cool. But um, a lot of the animals weren't actually ours, so we had farmers that lived and worked on the farm and they had their own animals, which I guess from a young age I presumed were like pets. Um, or just there for grazing because obviously you've got to keep the grass short. I sort of quickly learned that the animals that were on the land uh, were actually there because they were for meat, so they were going to be slaughtered eventually. And I guess my mum tells me that when I was like three years old, four years old, I used to look at the sheep in the fields and be like, Mum, is that, is that what we eat? Is, is, are those lambs what, what we eat? And she, she said to me, she was like, I was just like, how, how have you figured that out at such a young age? And I always loved having like dogs, pets, everything. I was always like, they were just my safe haven. So I guess for me, I wanted to know what the food on your plate was. Where did it come from? Living and growing up on the farm, we used to, you know, we witnessed birthings of lambs and the dairy situation. Our chickens had eggs. It's just everything really. We used to sometimes take in the lambs. Sometimes mothers can have up to three, three or four lambs. They didn't always have enough milk for all of them and sometimes they'll kind of bully the runt and leave them out and they just basically reject it. And the farmer would sometimes give those lambs to us as a family because we lived there all the time and we had, you know, a big house in Arga and we found it fun to like bottle feed them and look after them. We actually like grew really fond of one of the lambs and her name was Maisie and she was like really really sweet and we bottle fed her and kind of raised her and she went out into uh, the fields with the other lambs because we just thought it was the right thing to do to keep her with her own kind but when the day came that the big lorries would arrive and come and pick up the lambs to take them off to the slaughterhouse. Um, my dad specifically said not to take Maisie because she was more like a pet um, rather than like the other lambs, which is mean when you think about it, but she was special. Um, and when we came home from school, she was, she was gone. So that was really sad. And I just think from that point forward, the thought of even eating a lamb or like an animal or anything was just like really horrible and just made me think I could be eating like my friend, you know, which is just really sad. Um, I didn't want to take that risk and it just, it came, it became a lot more close to home for me. We also like when we first moved to the farm, we saw they had a butcher on site and stuff like that. So we saw like blood and knives and things like that. And it was just very gruesome, not, not nice. So from that point forward I became vegetarian, so six years old, and I was probably the only one at my school, um, I think there was one other girl, and we used to sit on a table by ourselves and have to eat like special food. And then that table slowly sort of grew and like more people joined in and more kids were coming sort of more conscious of what they were eating, which was really cool. I think it got to about ten people by the time I left. From that point forward I've been vegetarian. I did eat fish though. I ate fish for... 16 years, really long time, like longer than that, 18 years. I never really thought of fish as like having nerves or feelings or anything like that. When I was filming in New York, 
a couple of years ago. I went to a crab shack. There was like all these crabs and lobsters in this tank and they were all there and there was so many of them. They were all like, the tank was like this big and they were just stacked on top of each other and they had all their little claws bound together and they were just sitting there. And you walk in and they all just look at you as you walk in and you're like, oh, I was like, oh my God, why are they all just there? Like they look so cramped and scared and you know, defenseless as well. Cause their one sort of way of protecting themselves, defending themselves was taken away from them, which I just thought was really horrible. So I got really upset and I said I didn't want to be there anymore. I was with um, a friend at the time and he was like, oh, something silly. Like, and the chef came out, he goes to the chef can you just tell her that like, it's fine, you know, the lobsters, the crabs, like they're fine because she's really freaking out and she wants to like rescue them and release them into the ocean. And he was like, oh, you know what the worst thing is, is when, when uh, you boil them alive, they scream. And I was like, what? And the guy that I was with was like, no, 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 isn't that just a myth, isn't it? just, you know, the boiling water going through their bodies, making a loud noise. He was like, no, they're screaming. And I was like, oh my God, that is so horrible. And I just thought, I'm never gonna eat lobsters or crabs ever again, ever. It's a horrible way to die and they don't deserve it. And then I was like, you know what? What about other fish? Surely it's the same thing. And I watched, I, said, I told myself, I was like, I'm gonna watch this video from Peter and it's like a awareness about fish and how you shouldn't eat them. And I thought, if I watch this video and I don't care, I'm gonna continue eating fish. Because I like fish and I wanna eat them. So I watched the video and it was about how like everyone has a scream and everyone can make noises to show they're in pain. But because fish can't, they are sort of overlooked. And it showed this fish like on a table sort of gasping for breath and it's like not all screams make noise, basically saying it has a silent scream. And I was like, oh my God, that's horrible. I was just like, no, I can't, I can't eat it, no. So from then on, I haven't eaten fish. And then earlier this year, um, I watched a documentary called Cowspiracy, which I'm sure many of you who are maybe a vegan or maybe even aren't vegan have seen. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, because it's amazing. It's really educational, it's really informative, and it kind of looks at a lot more of the issues associated with eating meat and fish and all those things, dairy, apart from, like, aside from the cruelty to the animals, there's a much greater issue with the environment. Basically, it's killing our planet. Our planet is dying because people are so hungry for meat and dairy and all these things, and just watch it because I can't even get into it right now. Just it's crazy though. When you see it, you're just like, whoa, this is crazy. This is happening. I didn't ever think about dairy as being cruel, even though I grew up on a farm. I didn't even think like I was like, no, cows have to produce milk. Cows need to. After I watched it, I was like, oh my god, like they only produce milk when they have a child, just like a mother or you know, a human or anything. It made me think like what happens to that cow, that calf when they have the milk, because obviously they're giving all the milk to humans. I looked it up online and I was like, oh my God, they get killed. And I was like, you know what? That is just as bad as me. That is right up there because it's still an innocent life. It's a baby effectively. And it was just like, I can't, I can't eat it anymore. And I used to love dairy, I used to love dairy. Like I used to eat, Everything from mac and cheese to donuts to milkshakes to cupcakes, just cheese on its own, crackers, apples, anything like just love dairy. So when I cut it out earlier this year, I literally lost about a stone because it removed a huge amount of variety for me and a huge amount of meals that I was eating. I guess dairy is really bad for you, it's really fattening, it's high in saturated fat, not good for you. I feel like way better than I've ever felt in my life so much healthier now that I've kind of researched what there is to eat and, you know, really sort of found replacements for all the meals that I truly loved before. It's just like, I can't imagine ever going back. Like, I don't miss that life. I don't miss those meals anymore because I have the meals that I want to eat, just vegan versions of them. Um, and, you know, some people are like, oh, you can eat eggs, like just, chickens have to lay eggs, which is so true. And for a while I did actually eat eggs, 
Um, but then I researched that as well because I thought, you know, vegans, they're not, they're not stupid. Like, they, they wouldn't just not eat eggs, like, unless it was cruel. And obviously, well, not obviously to some of you, but the egg industry kills 500,000 male chicks every day. Like, that's a lot of baby chicks. You know, the cute little yellow, fluffy, harmless, amazing little animals. They're dying every single day in masses because they're male and because they can't produce eggs. And it's a really brutal industry. There's, you know, chicks on conveyor belts and they just chuck them into grinders. They get grind, grinded to death, ground to death. And um, it's just really, what a life to be born into, you know, this world and then just have it taken away because you're a male um, and you're a baby and you don't bring anything to the table for humans who just want to eat eggs. I just think that everyone needs to watch these documentaries, Cowspiracy, um, there's a few others out there that are a little bit more hardcore, that have a lot more like violence involved and they're pretty intense. I mean, I've seen all of them and I just like, I don't need to make myself watch that over and over and again, but once you've seen it, you can't forget those images. You need to see, you need to know where the meat that you're eating, the dairy that you're eating, where it's coming from. That's so important. If you watch those videos, you see where it's coming from and you still don't care, then fine. But maybe you should research the effects that it's having on the planet that we live in because everyone needs it to live. We need this planet. And you think about how much it's given us. Like everything, everything. Everything in this room, in this flat, in this city, in this world, it has come from the planet. Like even my phone, which is just weird to think that our planet can make something like this. Um, but we still want more. We just want to take, take, take. And I think that at some point, you know, people have to stop being greedy and think about others and think about, well, essentially yourself. So yeah, I've never felt better. I, I feel like I look the best I've ever looked. Some people may disagree, um, but I don't really care. And to be honest, like, I just wish everyone would do it, but it's, I think everyone has their own journey and everyone has their own way of getting there, but I have to just encourage you to educate yourselves and research this topic and then make your choices, take as much time as you want, but get there eventually. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my vegan story. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. I hate talking about myself for that length like of time and my throat's dry, my jaw hurts, I'm literally like, ah. But um, you know what, sometimes you just gotta preach a little bit because those that are suffering cannot preach for themselves. So I take that responsibility quite seriously. So yeah, let me know what you think. You might hate it. I might have really pissed you off. Who knows? But let me know what you think and if there's any tips that you want or any more advice, ask me and I will be sure to give it to you.